Recording, rather. Hello. Recording. It's Trent. Ah, so it's Trent. What we're going to do to start with is I'm going to play something really silly. Well, I'm going to play around with this clock library. I don't know why I said it was silly. Um, so last night I stayed up until like four in the morning. It was really dumb. But uh, I got the at least the basic version of clocks working. Um, that, that is the Norns clock library uh, running on Crow. It's it's not quite as fancy as Norns is um, in terms of the back end, but in terms of what you interact with as as the scripter, as the musician, is uh, it's almost it is identical. I think it's identical. I I did my best to keep it identical. So we can start by saying. I only, so last night I implemented them, and after I'd implemented them, that was the first time that I'd used them. So that's always a joy, uh, and it's quite strange. So we can say clock sleep and then print i. And this should, like, delay... This should print the word hi one second after I hit enter. Hey, it works. So that's cool. Um, better than that, though. Let's, um... How do we get values in? Put them at the end, right? This is going to be an awfully an awful long line, but I'm going to try and do it. I equals 1 to 8 do clock run. I'm going to pass in the number i, and with that, I'm going to say clock.sync i print bang. Have I got enough parens? I need an end. Did something. So there's now like a an internal clock running on Crow all the time. But this is not very exciting one unless you have an actual script. So we need to edit a script. How do we how do we do that? What do we oh, ugh, what is this rubbish? Uh, we need a text editor. Do I have Sublime on here yet? I do, right? Yeah. Cool. So uh, I'm gonna quit out of Druid. Here we go. It's uh, it's still very warm in New York. <laughs> Save as. All right, I'm just gonna make a little script, and then I'll bring this Sublime uh, instance over so we can look at it. But let's save it somewhere useful. Uh, I make a new folder. I feel like we should rename these these streams to like Trent figuring out how to use Windows. Um, I'm going to call it Bowery even though this is not the online Bowery. It's just the place of Crow Scripts. So I'll call it Clocky Dog. Alright, let's I'm gonna turn off Chrome. Oh, I can actually just change it to a different window. How about that? Sublime text. Yeah. Alright, and the 
PowerShell, it's going to be kind of annoying. We'll like hover it up here somewhere. Yeah, that looks fine. <laughs> and it's a little file. There's always a million things to do in these things because I'm never prepared. Um, I want to change... Is there a shortcut to turn on Vim bindings in Sublime? Somebody... I just need to open the preferences. Whoa, it's so big. It is working, I just have internally always thought that uh, uh, escape and caps lock I always switch, and whenever I have a keyboard that isn't switched I get very confused. But, a demo of the new, I'm going to say new, I'm going to say the norm, of norms, clock library on current. We want to make some sound, right? That would be a, a nice thing to do. So let's start. I'm going to use just friends. I think I have to do number two. I think that's how it's hooked up. Um, let's see if that even works. Oh, I actually don't want to do that from here. I'm going to call it from... I put this documents. Okay, great. So I should now be able to run Clocky. idea why that is making sound right now. Oh, it's in cycle mode. Okay, no. It actually is working entirely correctly. Turn up the synth once we're actually making something worthwhile. Um, okay, so what I want to do is basically make, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm going to jump straight into doing some kind of more complex stuff just to kind of show the kind of nice interfaces you can build for things. Um, hopefully that will make sense. So I'm going to.
this more complex. So. Even better. This is super weird, but I'm really excited about this kind of idea. That's a hack, but we can fix it later. Well, why don't we fix it right now? Um, I can just do that inline. Now this doesn't have to know about just friends. So we can assign a note to anything. Anything we can address with a function can now be assigned a note. Oh, you can't see. Druid can hide for the moment. So for a new note, um, let's just make it work for now. So return math.random. library for nonce and it was funny because he was like making a bunch of uh, melodic kind of gestures and, and patterns and things and commenting how the way he was writing it was similar to how I was writing it and that's really cool I think we do often think about uh, how this stuff works algorithmically in a lot of the same ways um, but 
just because he called that out, I kind of want to try and see if we can come up with a different way to, uh, to kind of represent and talk about scales and, like, indexing into a scale. Uh, Snogable Clock. I mean, it doesn't take tap tempo right now. All I got working was the internal clock. Um, but we can, like, change the clock speed. Like, if I go to, to Druid, I think I can say clock.internal set tempo. Yeah, so this beat, beats per minute. So we can slow it down. It has an echo because it's on Just Friends is in cycle mode. You can also do really fast. questions about what this is doing, please let me know, but the general concept is to make, we have this function called run up, and it's a function that takes a function and sends a note to it. Um, so the cool thing about that is we could, we could send it not just to just friends, we could send it to with... changing um, this. Oh, no. <laughs> Context switching here is really quite strange. This is very strange to me. Anyway, the point is, you can do this. You can send a different, uh, you can just change the function that you pass to the arpeggiator and it will give it, it's like a new destination. You're basically passing it a destination. Um, this is cool because we can do some other stuff that people have been asking about um, that I think is not super obvious how it would work. I want to make this sound a little <laughs> less awful first. Okay, so instead of math random, so the classic thing that I would do would be I'd make a scale. I'd make it either a pentatonic or a Lydian scale. <laughs> I'd give it an index, and I would return the scale index by the index. we're operating over notes, we would divide this value by 12. Because we're working with equal temperament in 12 tones. Mm. 
and then we put it, the intern off of 12 o'clock, play like the FM of intern, and instantly it's just like, oh, it's like uplifting, beautiful, happy sounds. I said I was going to work today, but I'm just like writing a pro script. That's nice, I guess. So the question is, the question I have immediately is, how do we wrap this in a more functional style? How do we make it so that every time we do this thing, which I, which I do constantly, um, I don't have to write all of this boilerplate now? issues with uh, quantization. It could also be that my op is like being doubled up. I think I can call cancel all. No. Let's just, let's sit with this. It's 67 polyrhythm. than yeah, exactly. Um, I'm going back to one full. Obviously, I wrote this very late last night. It's uh, bound to have some bugs. <laughs> and I wouldn't expect it to be ready anytime soon. Okay, so to this question, how do we do this? Um, basically, I want to... I have a piece of data, which is the 
scale table. E.g. my pentatonic scale. Um, and I have a behavior, which is this increment by one of the index. So I'm going to call that uh, e.g. next. Um, uh, how much a dance party slot function? I mean, I feel like, yeah, you could, all you'd have to do is on this clock.sync, you could add, you know, math.random of some small value. Um, that would be a way. Or... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of options. But yeah, just, just add a little bit of random uh, to the timing. But because it's synced to the clock, it's always gonna land back in the right place. Like it's never gonna drift over time, it's gonna be moving around. You'll have to do like a add random minus a constant, which is half of the random window to make it around the point. But uh, that should work fine. I want to... This is cool. something like this is cool is because I have no idea why it sounds like this. that are 12 octaves below C4. <laughs> or, yeah, C4. C3. It's... And then it's got the FM cranked up. And because it's linear FM, low notes are way more FM than high notes. So I guess the sound is the FM sweeping. It's fun. So we have this idea, what's an interface into it? Um, it's like a, there's gotta, obviously there's gonna be a better name for this, but it's like a note sequence, right? Um, and this is going to be, you wanna make a function essentially. So, 
make sequence is going to so we have the first arg one is a scale table arg two is a behavior which is going to be out of the list Strings, we're gonna say next, prev, or rand, and we can do drunk too. How about that? That's like a nice little interface. And then the return value is going to be, it's gonna return us a function that we can call regularly to get a new value out of this table. like direct ones first where we just give it a string um, we say give me the next value the next the next the next and we'll just cycle through um, but we can also set it up so that we can send it a just an integer a number and it'll step if it's positive it'll step forward if it's negative it'll step back um, and you can probably pass that in as a function so that, that could be dynamic but that's getting way down the road. We've got to make it work first. So um, we'll need to capture the scale. I mean, the scale is automatically captured into a closure if we use it in a return function. So it's just going to be a function that takes no arguments. And what is this function going to do? this behavior inside of this function. How do I... Uh, what's the magic command? Every operating system is different in terms of... <laughs> selection in Sublime, it um, works differently on every platform, which is very frustrating. Doesn't, this is a 
function with a function inside. We don't want that. I think the index beginning at one that belongs out here. And this is just that. So this Tells me it's working. <laughs> That's so sick. Which means we can get rid of this. And it means that for all the future pro videos I do, I'm just going to use this fancy function. Scale size. 
breathe just as easily as before. Start, it's not getting um, cancelled. Oh, that's nice.
So, I wonder. Do you think we can do two? <laughs> um, can I turn down the volume a little bit? Um, I'm gonna leave that one, but this second one... There's this really cool idea. Oh, okay. The next thing we're gonna... We're gonna jazz this up. Yeah, I want to put this, the make sequence, some, I'm going to put something like it in the library. Uh, I think it can probably be, like, maybe even better. Um, but I absolutely agree it should be. We're going to extend this. Um, I want to pass in to the, uh, the run arpeggio function a time constant. Um, so that first one I'm going to leave as 1 over 4, so quarter notes. This one I'm gonna do one over three. No, maybe even slower. Two over three. So this will be like dotted triplet crotchets. Is that what they are? And I'm gonna do this this trick where if you take a pentatonic scale and add two semitones, you combine it with the original one, you get a Lydian scale between, like, back and forth between two voices. Um, but it's going to happen much more irregularly. Restart it because I know clocks are gonna get weird. This one, I like the, the drunk on the like the faster one because it like moves around and does interesting stuff. But for the, the off one, let's just use next. So it'll be a climbing, ascending up here. Rather than change that, I'm going to slow these down. Let's leave it at 80.
Uh, yeah, Brian, yeah, the clock timing does feel pretty good. I think I was not confident about it last night because I was just watching prints on the screen and, you know, obviously there's a lot of uh, issues in that. I think Druid only polls ten times a second, so I was probably just being confused by that. Unfortunately, I can't hear it in stereo in here. But that brings us to the next thing I want to try and do. Um, that was cool. All that, that was all we had to do to like change what it was being sent to. I think it was uh, Jason on the Lions Forum was asking about the idea of, or like, saying that they wanted to, uh, to use ASL style functions, um, like the LFO function, um, to control things over I2C. You know, being able to. I like say, oh, I have like now with uh, with synth. Um, one of the things you can control, you can control the ramp control and the curve, like ramp and curve, like on Just Friends, but they're slightly different. But um, the idea that you'd want to like LFO them without having to use a cable. Um, and obviously, there's other other modules where it maybe makes more sense, like perhaps sending messages to uh, the ER301 sound computer, um, or things like this, uh, like different modules. Um, So let's try and do something like that. Yeah, so I'm going to try and do it for, let's say, the curve control on Wisynth. So it'll sound like a... 
Should be this kind of sweep. Yeah, it's not too dramatic. Why don't we do something more interesting? Like... If I make the, uh... We'll figure it out in a, in a second, but um, go. I want to try and uh, control some parameter on on width, in the width synth. Um, and I want to. I'm gonna write the syntax for it before I, I implement it, uh, which I think is how I'm in general trying to uh, trying to write code in, in, in general. You know, from the, like, the top down. Um, I remember reading a lot about uh, Lisp programmers back in the day, and like some of the the big books, like the, the kind of seminal texts about Lisp programming and like high level programming in general, is that. And you can't really do all of this in, in Lua, but um, the idea is that you write the program from the top down, but also from the bottom up. And you write, you basically keep writing them both until they meet. And when they meet, your program's done. Um, but so, I'm trying to spend more time from the top down. Because usually I'm like, I want to jump straight into the bottom up and think about uh, how the bits talk to each other. Like the, the lowest level pieces. But yeah, I'm spending more and more time thinking about Thinking about the API, thinking about how do I want to talk about this concept. Um, and starting there, it feels more interesting. Um, in terms of this script, I'm I'm making these tables at the top, and we haven't used them. Like, why am I saving these? Um, the point is so that you can cancel them later. Right now, I'm just kind of like letting them run. Um, but this is kind of just a cons, like a, the idea is that you could theoretically uh, cancel them, like from Druid or from, a, from an event in a system, so you wouldn't have to restart the whole system to, uh, to change that up edge here. Because if you don't save it, once you hit run, it's just going to run forever until you restart. So this is just kind of like a just in case. So my LFO is going to be... I was calling it a function LFO. Um, up here we're calling this run up. This could be a function up. Um, I don't know. It's some, I think naming is tough, but we'll leave it function LFO for now. It's not a library, it's just a function I'm writing. So what I want to do is pass it in a any function that takes a single value um, and we're going to create an LFO over that value using the clock system. So one thing, let's just give it a something. So I'm going to put it on the FM index of width. So that's it. That's the function that's going to get called regularly by the other thing. Um, so it's... You can kind of think of it as frames. Uh, so every frame, we're going to call ii.wsyn.fmindex. Uh, and we're going to pass it some value. And that value is going to be calculated by the other thing. So it should feel like I'm just assigning an LFO to this value, which is a function. Um, frankly, we could start right there. I think, actually, why don't we start there? 
I do want to parameterize this with a minimum, a maximum, and a time step, which is like a frame rate. And then maybe a shape. Uh, so the reason you'd want all of those minimum and maximum is so that you can say, you know, this, uh, the LFO should sweep over this range of values. Um, the frame rate is basically how many, uh, we're going to do frames per second. So how many samples to smash into this LFO. Um, and shape is so that we can change the, uh, so that we can change the shape of the elephant. So we're going to start with a, a ramp wave because it's the easiest. Um, but that, that kind of should be it, right? So what's exciting about this is we can make a library where just like with ASL, um, you would just say like, you know, you would say I, I, I you would say output of one, uh, and you could just pass it this LFO function. So that's one way to do it. The more I look at this, the less natural that feels. You know, I kind of, I almost want to write LFO output one dot volts, something like that. You know, like that feels almost closer to uh, the goal somehow. That feels more natural for like passing signals around. But not going to change that for now. Um, that would be hugely breaking and require every bit of documentation to change. But uh, it's fine. I'm gonna post the gist of this online anyway, so Aglia, yeah, I got you. Don't worry, we got you. I'm, I'm trying not to be destructive in this text file, I'm just gonna keep creating more stuff. Oh, so that was just saying these two are the same thing, right? So this one is passing the LFO to the output, but in this case we're doing, we're kind of flipping it. We're saying passing the output, which is this function, to the LFO. That's the only conceptual difference. Otherwise, it's kind of the same thing. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna go down the bottom of the file just to get some space. Um, ooh, were these returned? Yeah, they're returned, cool. So, we wanna make a function. Oh. Call it FN LFO. And it's going to take a function. We're going to, so I use fn, short for function. That's pretty uh, standard. You'll see it around a lot. Uh, it's easy. So... This is going to be the same thing. We want to return... clock run over a function, yeah, so that's like, that's our general structure, and then here is do stuff. Um, it's an LFO, so the immediate thing I'm, I'm recognizing is that we're going to call this indefinitely. So we'll do a while true, instead of do stuff, this is, um, A frame. And so fundamentally what I'm going to want to do is call fn. Uh, and I'm going to pass it some value. So now the question is, what is the value? Um, and that's a good question. So 
So I'm gonna jump the gun a little bit. I'm gonna make some local local values. Min max frames per second. And these are going to equal zero five and let's say thirty. So this is like multiple parameter passing, so this is min, max, FPS. I just write it out this way because it allows you to kind of collapse that, collapse things a little bit on the front end. You could just do four lines in a row, but somehow this feels more elegant to me. I don't know. It gives this like visual spacing between the default values and the actual, you know, the guts of the function. Uh, we're not using them yet, but we can put in these other arguments. I don't know about shape yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that one off. Um, which means we can actually change this to be min or So this, uh, this construction basically says if these values exist, like if they get passed into the function, then just use their value. That's what uh, this first word is. Um, but if that is nil, meaning there was no extra argument sent in, then it'll send in this, it'll just use this default value. And it will assign it to these local versions. Actually, this doesn't have to be local because the arguments passed to a function are already local by default. So this this just refers to these arguments up here. Um, so yeah, we're going to return a clock. Uh, so we'll return the clock run so that we can cancel it later. And the clock run is going to execute a function which, while it is true, uh, it will call the function and then it will sleep for some time. So, clock.sleep. Um, so this just takes a number of seconds that we sleep for. Uh, so the this is really simple. It's one over FPS. So frames per second is 30, so we want to sleep for one thirtieth of a second between every time we call this function. Um, so now the question is, what do we want to send the function? We're only sending one value, uh, but we know it's between min and max. So I think we should do, we'll build this gradually. So we need a, we need to step through a phaser. Um, so in order to do that, we need to have, I guess we need a, a value. Oh, do we capture it inside or outside? This is a weird thing about closures. Like, I don't know if to put it out here or to put it inside of the clock run, but, um, or inside of the function inside the clock run. We'll figure it out. So, phase equals zero. I think it makes sense in here. So, phase, at every step, we're going to increment the phase by, oh, <laughs> we're missing a really important val uh, argument to our function, which is the speed. Um, or if we match the ASL lib, it's going to be duration.
So this is like one second. So let's go back up. Uh, it's fine. We don't need to pass it. We're going to use our default value of one second. Right? So I think the math here is going to be... Um... Well, if it's 1, then it will be 1 over 30, which will mean it takes 30 counts. If duration went to 2, we would want to we would want that phase to move half as fast, so we want to put it in the, the denominator. So it's going to be speed time, oh, not speed, duration times FPS. 1 over duration times FPS. So if we increase the frame rate, we're going to decrease the phase step, the increment step. If we increase the duration, we're also going to decrease. Yeah, so that was correct. So this is... Uh, to me, that's, that's obvious what it's doing. <laughs> Maybe that's not true. Um, and then we're going to check that it's not out of bounds. So if the phase is greater than or equal to 1, uh, then let's do an actual if. If phase greater than or equal to one, then phase equals phase minus one. And we'll do it with a while. While the phase is greater than one, subtract one from the phase. Yeah, so that should handle it. It'll alias awfully, but it will still work, even if you're... Even if the, the increment step is bigger than the frames per second can handle. So that's a phase value, and now we need to map it from minimum to maximum. So... minus min, phase equals phase times range, plus min. So that maps to uh, min max. And that's what we need. This is not working very well.
It seems like it's running really quickly. I'm thinking... Okay, so I think our, our phase increment calculation is incorrect. Oh, it's because we're manipulating it after the fact. Cool, so we actually need to make a copy here. Um, let's just call it O. Yeah, great. Okay, so let's make the frame. I decreased the frame rate to once per second, so let's crank it back up. Let's try 30 again. But let's leave the duration a full 10 seconds. So this should be a really nice slow sweep. That sounds pretty cool. Let's speed it up. So that's an LFO running over I2C, like 30 frames a second. It's not that fast, but like for slow modulations, it's not. triangle wave.
it would be not difficult to make this work over a synced timing instead. Uh, so at the moment we're calling duration just the number of seconds. Um, you could convert that to hertz by simply doing one over the duration. Um, but you could also pass in a clock sync value. I think that would be really fun, actually. I'm trying to think of how to do it without breaking this function. possible, but it's not for today. Um, okay, so...
Reservoir. Wow. 
to actually make any kind of musical type of thing today. But it's cool, it's, this stuff is like... I love that this level of composition can come out of such a small amount of code. It's like, wild to me. And like, so much of this is going to become part of the library, and... Like, even a lot of this wouldn't need to be here. You know, the idea that, like... 
Like this could be... That would be the whole script. 33 lines to make like this admittedly strange uh, composition. Composition's a stretch, but no. Feels good! And on that note, I'm gonna sign off. This has been Maps with Trent. I'll be here most Thursdays. I'm not promising every week anymore. It's a little bit much. But I'm here for now. So yeah. Thanks everyone. I, I'm, I'm sorry, the clock stuff is probably not going to be done anytime soon. But uh, I will share the script. You could... The sync part's difficult, but you could do all the clocked up sleep stuff with metros. That would be just fine. Uh, even the like I2C LFO stuff you could do with metros. So it's possible. I was just excited to try out some new things. So yeah, I'll post the I'll post the script and uh, shoot me any questions you want. I'll be around. But uh, yeah, cool. Have a lovely week. Tell people you love them if you do.